What I'm about to do now kind of builds upon what you've already seen previously, but I work as an integration architect on a worldwide SWAT team, which means that we travel all over the world with customers and help them work with a lot of our hybrid cloud integration suite of products. This could be stuff like gateways like Data Power, API Connect, which is API management, our premier API management tool. And I really have a background in mobility and Node.js. Um, I came from startup uh, and just recently been at IBM for the last three years. Uh, but uh, I really have a passion for Node.js uh, when I started learning it. Um, I have a lot of code that is Loopback 3. And like everyone else in this room, I think everyone agrees you may also have the same. Do we have a lot of people using Loopback now? Loopback 3, show of hands? No, no, OK. Well. As I started my journey through Loopback 4, I always want to have, as when I'm learning anything, I'm also learning Go, um, Golang, I want to have a quick victory, which helps me kind of say, I can do this. Because otherwise, it's pretty overwhelming to try to migrate code from one code base to another. Um, and this is catered to do just that. Um, what you see here is a link that I'm going to put in the PowerPoint. It is a link to a uh, proof of technology we have for our API management tool. And one of the lessons in there is actually building a node microservice. And uh, well, you kind of do it the loopback three way. Uh, so I want to offer you this as your own way to go home and practice. Um, you can hit this data source. It is on the internet. Um, and through what you've learned today by doing it, we're going to make a service API, something that's, again, uh, centered against um, my SQL. When I open up my SQL, you can see that there is already data in the, in the database, okay? Um, and on the actual web page for the, uh, it's kind of going to walk you through the data source connector. It's one of those rare opportunities you get to see credentials live on the net, okay? Um, and don't worry, I have it already hardened with UFW, firewall it out. Uh, this is only the user that can read this data. That's all they can do. But this kind of shows you perspective on how we did it as Loopback 3. And now it's kind of give you a quick Loopback 4. Now, for the sake of speed, I'm going to go through this. I like to, to learn things in steps. Um, I have a huge archive of notes. Uh, whenever I want to go back and remember something, I go back and look at step 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right? And it should closely mirror uh, what you've already learned today, um, tonight rather. All right, so again, you can see the URL here, but as I kind of gather it together, oh, that's another link. There are five steps, to that, four major steps that we got, okay, we have, all right. The first, we're going to create the project, of course, considering we already have the project created. We're going to then make a data source for Mongo. Um, we're going to create the model, because we need to know the entity that describes, the object that describes our data. Okay, and since we already have data, we know that we need to mirror an object that mirrors the data that we have in here. I apologize, this is very, very small, but um, there are five fields here. Uh, name, description, image, price, and ID, all right? Uh, we're going to create the repository, and as we know, this is going to persist against the data source, so we're going to do an entity model. All right, and the data source is really what binds against the data source. And then we're going to create the controller, and that's what actually generates all our endpoints. All right, as we go from there. And then we're going to run npm start and go from there. We should see data live. All right, this is the go. Let's see if we can do this in a couple of minutes. All right, just to prove this can be pretty fast and easy. All right, so I'm going to go to my desktop. I'll try to type slow. Let me know if it's, if I can make my matrix thing be big. All right. So we're going to make a, we're going to make a project. And I'm going to call this retail, because we have products, right? Let's just kind of keep it here. Retail loopback project to list items. All right, we'll keep it on a de uh, desktop. I'll keep all, all the defaults in there because a lot of code repositories like this I always want to go back and kind of read 
uh, kind of study how things are built and how they work. That's kind of the best way to really get started for me um, is to go in and, and study it as is and I can take things away, uh, put things in, modify, make remote methods, you know, and kind of make it be my playground to work with. All right, so I'm in the project now. Let's clear again. And we said our first step is to create the model. All right, so that's LB4 model. And I'm going to call this item. Now, all loopback users, we know when we persist against a data source, we must, all your models from loopback 3, they imitate where well, they should mirror the table names that you have. So our table is called item. We want to make the model name item. Okay? It is an entity. All right? No free form. We want to all use strict. All right? And now I'm going to... Uh, uh, kind of go through my properties that are there. Let's make the ID. It is a number. Yes, it is the ID property. Yes, of course, it's required. We have a, let's check. We have name, description, image, and price. All right, and price is a float, so there is something that we want to do for that. So let's do name, string. It is required. Description, string, yes. And uh, image, string, yes. And last but not least, we have price. Oh, it's a number. It is required. Boom. All right. Models there. Okay. We have a model, but let's go back and do our data source. And we'll just call it MySQL choose from the list our MySQL connector. Um, I'm going to go old school and just put them in as is. So, all right, this is one of our app servers that we have hosted. Um, so demo.apc 3306 for MySQL. Username is student. All right. <laughs> password is, check out this very secure password. Password with a capital O and ex exclamation point, capital P, a zero for the O, all right? And again, it's in, the, it's in the web page there already, so you can put it in. The database is called Think. Okay, data source, model. Now we have an object to imitate our data. We need to now bind them together with a repository, LB4. Repository, we want to connect to that MySQL data source. And what model do you want? Item. Now, if you don't have that data source created, it will kick back and say, hey, you need to make sure you have that data source first. You don't have anything to, to bind against. So it, there, there's a lot of intelligence in here to kind of keep you moving at the right pace in order you need to do. All right. We have a repository. and. Do we have any endpoints yet? Our last thing is we must expose some endpoints, and that's the job for our controller. So LB4 controller. And I'm going to call my, I'm going to call it item. And we want, I want it to be kind of a service API, what I call a service API, anything that persists against the data source. I want it to be my CRUD. I don't want to write all that code. Uh, it's perfect to be one of my microservices there. The model I want to use is item. The repository is there. It's, we did, again, we have to identify our ID, and we know that it is a number. And I want to do slash items. Okay. So four easy steps, data source, model, repository, controller. Now it's time for us to fire it up, fire the project up. And let's look at our UI and go to the Explorer and test one of our endpoints. All right, so let me go over. All right, so we have our Explorer here. And as we can see, our item controller is here. Um, let's go to our Git items. And again, let's clear out. We want to try this. Let's clear out our empty, not passing any filter in. All right, let's execute it. 
Oh, <laughs> we got a problem, Houston. Hold on one second. Oh, yeah. This is by design, all right? So, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so when it does create the model name as the, the mirror, I know one of the things in Loopback 3 is it, um, a lot of your model names, it, it does a camel on the first instance there. Um, it does the same here, but we're going to do, I'm going to show you a little trick you can use to kind of um, replace all the references so the, you still have your model name, but we're going to make it lowercase so it mirrors your column, or your, your, your table, rather. So let's um, open up, let's close it out first, close, open up code, and we're going to go to our model. Okay, and I want to highlight my, my model name, and I'm going to say uh, rename symbol, okay, and I want to make this lowercase. Now, what it's going to do is cascade it down throughout all our code to replace all references. Otherwise, we got to go and trace out each one of these, and believe me, it will let you know each line that is there. It's one of the beautiful features of TypeScript. Uh, it keeps you, uh, eliminates a lot of things um, that otherwise you would have to uh, be, would kind of let go in just playing JavaScript ES6. All right, so we've saved everything. Let's restart. All right, we'll go back. I don't have to regenerate the page. I'll just let it do it on the fly and replace that. And what I see is I have data coming out. Um, this is also good. I see my endpoint here. Let me make sure and go and test in the browser. Make sure it's there. And I have all my data kind of pulling out. So a real easy way, if you have a data source, um, uh, let this kind of be a, a quick one, especially showing the way you can have it generate the tables for you, but if you have existing, which will be the case for, well, I know a lot of my projects in code basis, it's, I already have data out there existing, and I want to be able to go ahead and ping against it, kind of replace my LB3 instance with this LB4, and quickly get up and running and, and rolling um, there as well. Um, there was one more thing I want to tell you. Uh, one of my next ones I'll do is I also have a MongoDB instance as well. So one of the next, please stay tuned um, on our Strongloop site. We'll be listing a lot of these video-based uh, uh, meetup videos. So we'll a lot, have a lot more and can start expanding on a lot of these, how to get started quickly and fast and, and get going from there. So again, this URL will be here. We'll, be, we'll put it out. Uh, try this, get started, and uh, thanks for, uh, for coming up.